Well, well, well. Do you want to find some goals for yourself in patch 9.1? I think that looking, uh, looking a bit cool, bit sexy, bit badass, and wow, is a pretty damn good goal, and that's why today we are going to run you through all of the stuff that is new to collect on your character in this patch. You can get the bits that you want, plus a few little tips and tricks, a few transmog-related updates, and some, uh, cool mog ideas that we have found. Now, you can in fact transmog your very person with our Patreon pins, your walls with our monthly art, and your anything that a sticker can go on to with our stickers. All while you get our weekly podcast, the daily briefing, and a bunch of other stuff too. So, patrons, thank you, you're awesome. And the join link, if you want all that good shit, it is right down below. Okay, let's roll, let's get into it. First up, I've got to flag a change for you. You can now transmog your shoulder slots separately. And this opens up loads of options. I mean, come on. If you've got two similar tinted shoulders, but like different, you could do that. You could do mix-ups of the color. You could blend the shape language of two different sets. Try doing that with some of the new um, stuff that comes from Torgas I'm going to cover soon. Maybe you could go for a multi-tone transmog with your shoulders. Okay, the latter bit might be hard, but there's more freedom in the system, and that is great. Into the raid then. Sanctum of Domination has got one set for each armor type, with each difficulty from LFR through to Mythic having its own tint. Now, these are just plain awesome sets if you like that darker vibe. And the great thing is they will match the new hand and charger mounts that came with patch 9.1. I mean, seriously, if you've got the new, like, the new set, and the big charger mount, you'll look like a pretty, pretty cool operator. Now, there is no way to get this stuff faster. You'll just have to raid. LFR gets you the darker blue tint, normal is a bit more gray, heroic is gold, and mythic is dark gray and red. It's the nasty looking one. That's far from all for Sanctum of Domination, though, because it does have some pretty damn incredible looking weapons. I mean, first, the bow, dagger, and quiver of Sylvanus. That's great. Hunters get the bow and the quiver, and I believe her dagger is for rogues, though hopefully any class that can equip a dagger can get that for Mog. Um, that's far from all, though, because Sanctum of Domination also has got stunning-looking weapons, which we're showcasing for you now, and those all, of course, come in tints that match the main armor sets. And really, I've got to say, the staff, two-handed axe, one-handed mace, polearm, bow, cro- Actually, wait, no, they all look wonderful. <laughs> the team's really knocked it out of the park with this raid's gear. Looks awesome. Okay, there is more though. Tazavesh. Tazavesh has got even more fantastic looking weapons, but there is bad news because the actual armor is just the Oribos dungeon set from 9.0. But hey, the weapons are great, though there is a bit of a downside. So first, look at this one-hander anima sword brimming with energy. How cool. Um, now, this is the stuff that comes from normal. There's these cool looking uh, blue weapon models um, that cover offhand, shield, fist, dagger, glaive, bow, two H mace, two ha uh, handed axe, and two handed sword. So we got all these awesome looking weapons. But the thing is, if you look at the data mining, you will see really great color variants of these things, like color variants of the one handed sword. Um, there's these ones for the two handed mace. These look great. Fortunately, it doesn't actually seem like they're obtainable in the patch. Now, icons for them are in the game database as of 9.1, but the variants themselves don't seem to, in their completeness, be on the loot tables or the mog window. So I've got to assume that if you want, for that one-handed anima sword, all of the different colors of Blizzard have made, you might have to wait. Which is a great shame because it just looks cool. So hopefully Blizzard adds in more here soon. Torghast is suddenly relevant for cosmetic-driven players because it drops a total of 41 new shoulders. Actually, already, I think I've got like eight or nine in my character. So, I mean, hey, we've even got this one that looks like the bulwark of Azanoth from TBC. I've got it. Pretty neat. Now, these are earned in two different ways. First, they can drop from NPCs in the Adamant Vaults, which are the set of two floors that you can get after you get a regular, well, you get your five floor run of Torghast to five gems, and you've unlocked the Adamant Vaults from the box of many things. So it drops in the mobs there, but they're also sold by the broker vendor NPCs that you find in Torghast, with uh, them just having a random selection and them costing 300 Phantasma each. Now, the thing is, I found that uh, you don't need to buy anything from the first broker you get, you can basically just do your Torghast run, try to save as much Phantasma as you can, and get away with not spending a lot, and then, you know, after you kill the boss, 
the broker NPC will have the shoulder pieces on them. Um, and like, it'll be the same shoulders that the first broker NPC that you got in your Torghast run will have had. So uh, you don't need to spend them all on the first broker that arrives, basically. Now, while these shoulders are not forming a full set, they are shoulders, and that does mean that they'll be a very useful transmog tool, though I will admit I have found it hard to match their tint with other bits of gear. Then also, these can drop from Corthia Rares and Treasures. Now, there are also three Torghast themed back pieces. They cost a thousand Phantasma from Broker Venot on layers, um, well, floor five of layers nine through 12 of Torghast, and they come in three designs, each of which has got many tints. Now, not spending 1,000 Phantasma might be tricky near the start of the patch, but once that box of many things kicks in, you get a few more weeks of research and some more gear, it will be very easy to forgo the Phantasma and, uh, you know, save it up for some Mog gear. Now, some of these drop from the Tormentors of Torghast event as well, so just be sure to get that cleared. Moving on then, Covenants. So, patch 9.1 adds in new Covenant sets. Each Covenant has actually got a set that is unlocked for purchase at Renown level 60 and Exalted Reputation with the new Death's Advanced Faction. And that will just take a bit. This just boils down to doing your Covenant Renown weeklies as per usual. And of course, you know, your, your Corthia dailies and weeklies, right? That's what it is. And once they're unlocked, these sets will cost 6,000 Stygia, which of course is just, you, you know, you get that from doing content on them on Corthia. And certainly from my experience thus far, you get loads, uh, loads and loads of it. So that's one set for every Covenant available at Renown level 60. But if you reach Renown level 77, you can unlock another tint of that for purchase and it costs 10,000 anima. But that's 10,000 anima for the whole ensemble instead of you just purchasing individual pieces. And of course, by that time, anima will be far more plentiful as you just get way more anima um, in this patch. Okay, next then, player versus player content, where it is the usual, there's another two uh, tints of the Sanctum of Domination gear. The normal tints are a little bit more conservative, with the elite ones, of course, looking, uh, well, rather incredible, really. I love that bright metal look, I think it's awesome. Now, you'll be able to earn the full elite set with a rating of 1800, which I believe is lower than it was in the past, but, uh, of course, to get that, you'll be best served trying to push that rating early before boosting problems and things like that make the rate and climb to 1800 more difficult further on into the season. What else then? Well, the Death's Advance faction has got the Mantle of Death's Advance, which costs 500 Stygia at Honored, and then also it's got the Death's Advance Tabard at Exalted for 3000 Stygia. Beyond that, there is a much requested feature though, glasses. Yep, you can purchase moggable glasses in patch 9.1. There are five glasses, and they're obtainable just with gold in Stormwind and Orgrimmar, and they're sold by NPCs who are located just outside each city's barber shop. Okay, then another just thing I want to bring up, it's a quick note from the 9.0 uh, cosmetics. Many of these will be way easier to obtain because of the various anima gain increases. I mean, I'm sure you've noticed a torrent of anima from your Corthia content. Now, if you add that to the stable around 2k a day that you can get from regular gameplay, you can actually get a little bit more, and especially you'll get more once the anima um, rewards, uh, you know, the anima reward renown steps come in for the new renown track, um, you'll just be swimming in anima, basically, as compared to 9.0 launch. So you'll be able to blaze through those. Then finally for all this, just a quick note on soloing past content. This is a new tier. You'll all have more gear, right? And the catch up for this tier will get you you know, really up pretty quick. So because of that, Legion soloing will be easier. Now it's been possible for a good while, and of course, legacy loot mode does apply, meaning you will get plenty of drops. Now patch 9.1, uh, you know, it will allow people who don't do instant content to reach item level 233, which really is quite high. That'll greatly increase your ability to solo that old content, and the launch issues with Shadowlands that led to the Legion content being way harder to do than it was supposed to be, those have since been fixed. Now, as for any BFA soloing stuff, remember, Legacy Loot Mode will not be active for BFA. So, you know, there'll be that. You won't be strong enough to solo, I'd say, the vast, vast majority of it. Though that said, farming up that content could make for a neat, uh, you know, neat evening of WoW with your friends. Okay, 
that's basically the main transmog updates, the things you gotta know. I mean, for me personally, I've just been doing Torghast runs and picking up the shoulders. That's mostly been it. But to play us out, because we do have a whole bunch of new things coming in, we thought we would uh, just leave a fun little compilation to play us out of um, just some cool transmog ideas that we found from around the internet. So, hope you enjoy that. Of course, hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.